Hi, and welcome to our first tutorial uh, for Red Strike, this really exciting and interesting um, synthesizer for iOS. Today we're going to learn first about the top section, which includes the oscillators, the frequency modulation, uh, and the pitch uh, envelopes and LFO. In the top left corner, as you can see, we have three main waveforms. We have a sawtooth, triangular, and square. And so already by changing those three, I can alter my sound. In interesting ways. The interesting thing though is that I can also morph between the main three waveforms and find very different um, uh, oscillator settings that give me different sounds. As you can see, right to the next of my oscillator, I have two options for envelope and LFO. Uh, again, an envelope allows me to change a parameter over time. And in this case, my envelope has two stages, as an attack stage and a decay stage. And because it is associated to the oscillator, basically, I can decide to morph between waveforms over time. So if I move my envelope settings to um, all the way to the right and I have a, an attack and a decay, you will hear my waveform changing over time with the selected attack and decay. This way I can decide um, how fast and for how long the morph between one waveform to the other will take effect. If I want to reset a parameter, I can just double tap on it. Down here I have an, also an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, which has a set uh, wave shape uh, as sine wave. And so this will allow me also to control my morphing, but this time in a oscillating way, determined by the rate. As you can hear, the oscillator is morphing um, at a steady um, sine wave timing determined by the rate. So if I increase the rate, the waveform will shape faster. So while it is a, a simplified um, section of a subtractive synthesizer, um, is still very powerful and yet very intuitive. To the right of the oscillator, we have our frequency modulation section. This section basically allows us to add a frequency modulation synthesis to uh, Red Strike. And again, it's something that allows us to create more complex waveforms, even with some simple controls. So the main idea here is that I have um, a second oscillator, which we're going to call the, the modulator, controlling my first oscillator, which is called the carrier. So if you pay attention here, if I bring up the depth while I play a note, I'm hearing an addition uh, modulation on my original waveform that again makes the sound way more interesting. And I have a few parameters that I can uh, use to make the waveform even more interesting. Of course, I can change the frequency of the modulator. If I double tap, I'm going to get the exact frequency of the oscillator. But I do, I'm not obliged to stay on that frequency, I can change it if I want. Now, the depth allows me to control how much of the um, 
frequency modulation is, is applied. I also have two types. I have a weak and a strong type. This is the strong version. And this is the weak. The frequency modulation section also can be controlled through my LFO and my envelope. So I can have the frequency modulation happening depending on my settings on the attack and the decay. And not only that, I can also have the frequency modulation be controlled by my LFO and LFO rate. As you can see the sound is getting way more interesting and it gains usually in richness. I'm going to reset now our frequency modulation parameters and we're going to concentrate on the uh, detune and sub oscillator. So I have a third oscillator here which is a sub oscillator which is creating a square wave but at a lower frequency. octave lower and that again allows me to add, add some richness and also I can detune the main oscillator creating more of a chorus effect This is good for creating more uh, bass patches and something um, that needs some depth. And finally, we have the pitch uh, section. This is where I can control the pitch over time through either a simple um, envelope with attack and decay or through an LFO. So what I can do here is actually really interesting because I can have the pitch controlled by attack and decay. So if I want the pitch to rise by a certain amount, I'm going to select it here. And this determines the time it's going to take to reach the peak and how long it's going to stay at that peak. So if I have a longer decay, it's going to take longer to go back to the original uh, pitch. This is a great way to do, for example, um, drops uh, with, a, with a bass sound. So the way you would do it is just you bring down the pitch instead of going up and this determines how fast it's going to go down. If you want to go a little bit faster, I'm going to do have a shorter attack and that's a great way to do some really nice uh, bass drops. The pitch can also be controlled by an LFO that allows this section to have the pitch going up and down again based on a simple sine wave. The, the rate controls how fast the other four is going to control the pitch.
You also have access to the drift, which allows you to have a little bit of random um, pitch control around the target pitch. The effect is to, 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 to give you something a little bit more out of tune. So it's not always precise when it reaches the, the selected pitch. So as you can see, there's a lot you can do right here to make some very interesting sounds. But of course there is more. So in our second tutorial, I'm going to describe the noise oscillator and the resonator.